So on this episode, I'm going to be talking about how I moved across country from Albany, Georgia, all the way to Los Angeles, California. And as you guys know, I'm originally from Atlanta, Georgia. I went to college in Albany State University. After graduation, I moved almost immediately to Los Angeles, California. Hey guys, I'm Sonique Saturday. I'm a handbag designer, fashion stylist, fashion blogger, influencer. I'm just a fashion enthusiast. I love I all things fashion. fashion. So I'm in LA and I don't have a job, I don't have a car, I don't have any money, but I do have a place to stay. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I came into a very fortunate situation to where I had to move in with my dad, but technically he was never home. So when I moved to LA, I knew what I already wanted to do. I just didn't know how I was going to make this thing happen. I was already a handbag designer known in the Albany, Georgia area, in the Atlanta, Georgia area but I was not known as a handbag designer outside of those areas. I really had to start all the way over. There is nothing like wiping the slate clean and really getting a fresh start. So of course, being that I was already the fashion girl known in Albany and in Atlanta, I wanted to adopt that to be a part of my brand with moving out here to LA. So I knew I wanted to be a handbag designer. I knew I wanted to be a fashion stylist. I just didn't know how to get there. I used to get on like Eventbrite and all of these different websites and look up networking events and fashion events and store openings, things like that. Places to where I knew I could rub elbows with the type of customers that I wanted to attract. Meanwhile, I did not have a car. Uber was not around. There was no Lyft, any of those things. So I took the bus and the train a lot of places my first like three or four years in LA a lot of people don't know that and I know a lot of people look at me now like you know super glamorous pretty girl no my glamorous pretty ass was on the metro <laughs> seriously um I started networking just organically and the thing about LA um, the thing about any big city but specifically LA is when you go to one event you're gonna meet someone who invites you to another event I will encourage you if you guys are watching this and you are you know ready to take your brand to the next level I encourage you to network as much as possible now Obviously with this coronavirus thing that's going on, you can't really go out to the clubs, you can't go to events, you can't go to networking, brunches, things like that. But there are plenty of ways to network online. Virtual brunches and virtual conference parties, Facebook groups, DMs. I mean, there's so many amazing tools that you can utilize from the comfort of your home to network with people that you don't already know. After doing that for months and months and months, I mean, literally guys, I used to get on the train and I used to have two huge black garbage bags <laughs> like talk about the uh, glamorous life of fashion I used to go from Silver Lake to downtown to West Hollywood to Beverly Hills to Culver City like I used to go all over the place with these trash bags trying to get my bags into stores guys I used to be sweating my ass off like bro somebody gonna take these bags I just made all these bags I just invested all this money someone's going to say yes and it's very discouraging honestly um, you know how young when you're young you're just bulletproof people can like chump you off all day and you'll just be like okay no problem like let me just go to the next store like as I'm skipping and sipping my lemonade with like a sunflower in my hair like I had that type of attitude honestly and I had already been down Melrose a many of times a numerous of times and you know stores they would say oh okay cool you know email us take my card blah 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 the whole shebang but you know obviously it never resulted into anything and eventually I went to um, a store and the owner was there um, they kind of liked my pieces they were like you know we feel like your bags will attract customers and then once customers come in they'll be able to actually buy our products so I was just like okay cool that's fine you know you guys don't think that people would actually buy my products but you think that people would at least stop inside of the store and take a look at my bags fine we have a deal let's do it I think I was on like a 
60 40 split they got 60 percent i got 40 percent and obviously i don't get paid until someone actually buys a bag so i used to pick up my little bitty commission check every single friday i used to take the bus to melrose avenue just to pick up my check and sometimes i would text the owner you know on a friday morning or a thursday night and say you know any sales this week and oftentimes they would say no and that means that i you know i'm not going to melrose this friday because i don't have a check to pick up <laughs> and i'm just like yo people got money out here like how am i gonna compete with this i ain't even got no car i ain't got no job i ain't got no money i ain't got no friends to put me on like this is crazy and it really just came to me and i was just like yo people are fake and i can remember writing can't afford hermes on the front of that brown birkin and still holding those two trash bags and going from store to store to store to store but instead people's attention started going to that one brown birkin that i painted on instead of the bags that i had filled with my trash bag which were the bags that you know had beads on them and patches and sequins and all this other kind of craziness people were like yeah, yeah yeah that's cute that's cute what about that brown birkin that says can't afford ms like that's funny i want that bag in my store and it ignited i mean that was the i didn't even make you fake like this birkin yet the store on melrose that i had product placement in was called eight degrees and And I can remember them putting that bag in the front like glass display and it was like a moment for me sitting across the street and watching tourists walk back and forth in front of eight degrees and I can remember tourists stopping taking pictures of this bag going in the store like picking up the bag asking the person you know questions about the bag laughing taking pictures with it like it was a thing for me and i was just like yo this is really something and just feeling really proud of that moment um i felt like all the times that i've been told no were built up for that moment i don't even know it's so so fast i had to hurry up and like make another one and i only had one i only made one and it was mine but so many people were stopping me about it i ended up just putting it in the store because i'm like well shit, my other bags are not selling and this bag gets me stopped 99 times a day. So let me just put that bag in the store and see if it sells and it did. So then I had to create more. And when I realized that people liked that kind of funny humor, I created You Fake Like This Birkin. It wasn't even, you know, how you guys see it now, like you fake like this Birkin. It wasn't like that. It was very just like janky and it, I think it was all lowercase. It looked crazy. I could be in the hood and somebody stops me and I can be in the Hollywood Hills and people would be like, yo, I know I have the real Birkin on my arm right now, but I want your Birkin. Like how much is that? I will buy it off of you right now. And I realized like, okay, ding dong like this is something that I need to hold on to and try to really market and capitalize on it and obviously my product is handbags but when I realized that my niche market was going to be you fake like this Birkin I had never painted on a bag before so this was something completely new to me you know I don't have a job I don't have a manager or agency or anything I'm like I'm doing this all on my own and it was amazing being able to just get that feedback. So although my handbags were doing really well, they weren't doing well enough to get an apartment and move out of my dad's place. I mean, they were making me a few hundred bucks a week, but this LA rent will humble you in a millisecond. <laughs> I mean, seriously. So I knew, okay, this handbag thing, like I'm still going to be able to do it, but I got to get another stream of income ASAP in order to really stand on my own two feet out here. And that leads me to the next episode. On the next episode, I'm going to talk about how I started my styling journey, how I was able to get jobs, 
get clients and start shooting in order to make money. So if you guys like this episode, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. This was really a humbling episode. Even for me to say this out loud, this is like humble beginnings. I mean, to say out loud that I used to be on the bus with two trash bags full of handbags and everybody shut me down, like <laughs> I'm having a moment here. So if you guys have any questions, any comments, please leave them below and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye guys.